So a vaginal yeast infection is a fungal infection that causes irritation, discharge, and intense itchiness of the vagina and the vulva, which are the tissues located at the vaginal opening. Also known as vaginal candidiasis, a vaginal yeast infection will affect three out of four women at some point in their lifetime. And many of these individuals will experience at least two episodes during the course of their lifetime. A vaginal yeast infection isn't considered a sexually transmitted disease, but there is an associated increased risk of actually contracting an infection at the first time of irregular sexual activity. There is also a lot of evidence to support that vaginal yeast infections are actually linked to mouth to genital contact, which is the case during oral sex. Vaginal yeast infection symptoms can range from mild to moderate and may include itching and irritation of the vagina and vulva, an intense burning sensation, especially during intercourse or during urination, redness and swelling of the vulva, vaginal pain and soreness, a vaginal rash or discoloration of the skin of the vagina, white vaginal discharge that resembles cottage cheese and may in fact be foul smelling, or even a clear watery vaginal discharge. Certain factors may actually increase the woman's chance of developing a vaginal yeast infection. They include antibiotic use, so yeast infections are actually quite common in women who take long courses of antibiotics. This is because these antibiotics actually work hard to kill off the normal or good bacteria that is found in the vaginal canal and actually leads to an overgrowth of yeast in this area. Number two is increased estrogen levels. So vaginal yeast infections tend to occur more commonly in individuals who have higher estrogen levels such as in the case of women who are pregnant, individuals who are on hormone replacement therapy, or individuals who take the pill. Number three is uncontrolled diabetes. So women who suffer from high sugar levels are also more susceptible to developing a yeast infection. That's because the yeast actually thrives in a high sugar environment, making these individuals more susceptible to developing a vaginal yeast infection. Number four is individuals who have a lowered immunity or an impaired immune system. So individuals who suffer from TB, HIV, or who take chronic corticosteroid therapies, for example, in autoimmune disease patients, these individuals are actually more likely to develop a yeast infection because their body is so immune compromised that it allows for the overgrowth of the yeast in that area. Number five is tight fitting pantyhose. So yeast actually thrives in a warm, moist environment and wearing pantyhose often actually creates this environment promoting the growth of the yeast in that area. Number six is douching. So douching actually rips away the normal flora or the normal good bacteria from the vagina and actually allows for an overgrowth of the fungus in that area leading to a vaginal yeast infection. Number seven is scented feminine products. So these include bath bombs, body washes, scented pads, and even scented tampons that actually cause local inflammation, irritation, and may lead to an increased growth of yeast in that particular area. Number eight is hot tubs and taking hot showers. This may also promote yeast overgrowth. And number nine is staying in wet clothes for long periods of time. So this is especially common in gymnasts, gym instructors, or women who spend a lot of time in swimsuits or work at attire that may be wet or sweaty. And this may also cause an overgrowth of yeast in this particular area. So the treatment of vaginal yeast infections depends solely on the occurrence, the frequency of it, as well as how severe the infection may be. So usually a short course of vaginal therapy, which means taking an antifungal therapy for three to seven days, usually treats the infections quite effectively. So a doctor may prescribe an ointment, a cream, a suppository, or even an oral tablet to treat your infection. So meconazole is usually the most common treatment and works well as a cream or even a suppository and usually rids the infection quite quickly within five days. In some cases, the doctor may also prescribe a single-dose oral medication 
but this is usually not given to a woman who are pregnant. And this is usually a single dose of fluconazole and this medication is actually used to treat more severe infections or infections that have been severely debilitating to the patient. Make sure to like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.